Michael Burry's investors laughed at him in 2006 and 2007 for predicting that the housing market in the United States would collapse, but he turned out to be completely accurate in this forecast in 2008. In February of 2021, he forecasted that there would be a significant acceleration in the rate of inflation in the United States, a time during which the most recent reported rate of inflation was lower than 2%. Bring things up to date and make the necessary adjustments? In June of 2021, he forecasted the greatest speculative bubble in history. But as you probably already know, the market for stocks and cryptocurrencies fell during 2022. He forecasted a white-collar led recession in September of 2022. And if you look at what has happened since then, you will see tremendous layoffs across the IT sector. The tour guide has a remarkable track record of being accurate. And just recently, he announced yet another significant and audacious forecast. If it comes true, the most recent projection is likely to have more significant repercussions for the economy than anything else he has discussed in the preceding years. Over the last month, Michael Burry has kept going crazy on Twitter. It is interesting that, at least for now, it looks like he's stopped deleting his tweets. This makes it easier for us to keep up with him, but without getting too far off the topic, Burry gave us an update on the economy on January 2, telling us that what he would thought would happen over the next few years. He said, Inflation has reached its highest point, but it is not the cycle's last peak. In the second half of 2023, the CPI is likely to go down or even be negative, and the US will be in recession by any measure. The Fed will cut interest rates, the government will spend more money, and inflation will rise again which is not hard to predict. Because Barry is saying that the current trend of falling inflation is just the end of the first wave of inflation, over the next few years, we are likely to see more waves of inflation because the Federal Reserve won't have the willpower to keep rates high, which could cause a recession but would crush inflation for good. And the reason that this potential situation immediately sends shivers down the spine of investors is that this would be the same scenario that happened back in the 1970s. But first, let's get some background on what is going on. So, over the past few years, we've seen a mix of problems with supply chain and printing more money. These two things have caused inflation to skyrocket to the highest level in 40 years. So, the Federal Reserve has had to step in and raise interest rates to slow the economy down, limit how much money people and businesses can borrow, which will limit spending. But of course, doing this also slows down the economy and puts more financial pressure on everyone. It is like picking the worst of two bad options. Do you want to let inflation get out of hand and make everything more and more expensive? Or do you want to raise interest rates and make it hard for your people to get money so they don't buy as many goods and services? This would make inflation go down. The lessons that can be learned from history suggest that you should choose option two. And what we witnessed in 2022 was the Fed hiking rates from effectively zero to approximately 4.5%. And as a result, inflation is now moving down. However, the fact is that people experience hardships during times when interest rates are exceptionally high. Although they are not particularly high at the moment, it is anticipated that they will keep climbing all the way through 2023. And what this means for people is that their debts, such as mortgages and personal loans, eat up more and more of their disposable income until they have little money left over to spend on other things because of the high interest rates they are paying on their loans. So keeping interest rates quite high for an extended period is not a rash option. As a result, there is a lot of political pressure from the public to cut interest rates. Lower interest rates, after all, make people feel better, and politicians want to make people happy. Furthermore, the president appoints the chairman of the Federal Reserve. So, all the political pressure is on the Fed to decrease interest rates. However, if this is done too soon, inflation will rise again. And then, despite all of your financial anguish in trying to curb inflation, the situation remains unresolved and you're back to square one. Inflation surpassed 5% in 1970 when the effective federal funds rate was 9%. And this identical scenario played out over the 1970s. Then, wouldn't you know it, inflation went back down to 3%, and the Fed lowered interest rates only for inflation to ramp back up to 11% in 1974, 
at which point rates were raised again, this time to 13%. Inflation then ramped back up again in 1975, at which point rates were raised again, this time to 15%. After some time, inflation returned to its previous 6% level in 1976. This prompted the Federal Reserve to ease monetary policy once more, declaring, you know inflation's going away now, and reducing interest rates to 5%. But all too quickly, inflation skyrocketed to 14% in 1980. It required Paul Volcker to step in and boost interest rates to 20%, which unfortunately sent the United States into a hard recession for inflation to be successfully overcome. Michael Burry thinks that will happen in the US in the next few years. He doesn't think we've learned from the past and thinks we're doomed to repeat it. Rates will stay high, inflation will go down and the US will go into a recession. People will have to deal with politics, put pressure on the Fed to lower interest rates, and boost the economy, which will cause the next wave of inflation. With such a bold prediction, you might think Burry is a bit of a loose cannon. But interestingly, he is not the only well-known investor to say this. Charlie Munger is another well-known person who thinks that the Fed will not have enough willpower to stop inflation. So interesting that both Charlie Munger and Michael Burry think the same way about this. They think that the political climate that let Volcker be tough and stop inflation in 1970 might not be there anymore. Unless there's a time when inflation goes up and down because the Fed keeps trying to lower interest rate only to have to raise them again. The Federal Reserve has stated multiple times that they are committed to preventing this from occurring, despite the fact that this is within their control. Jerome Bauer has acknowledged the inflation cycles of the 1970s in a few press appearances. The Fed has declared that it is committed to preventing a similar problem from occurring this time. Here is an extract from Powell's most recent FOMC news conference in which he discusses the Fed's failings in the 1970s. He stated that price stability is the Federal Reserve's responsibility and serves as the foundation of our economy. Today, the Federal Open Market Committee increased our policy interest rate by half a point. They continue to think that continuing hikes will be necessary to achieve a monetary policy stance that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2% over time. He and his co-workers are painfully aware that rising inflation imposes enormous hardship by eroding purchasing power, particularly for those least able to meet the increased expenses of necessities such as food, housing, and transportation. The historical record strongly discourages hasty policy easing. They will persevere till the task is completed. Therefore, the Federal Reserve is well aware of everything that transpired throughout the 1970s and has pledged to avoid repeating the same errors. Michael Burry's opinion is still quite true notwithstanding the Federal Reserve statements, because the Fed may be saying all of these things at the moment but whether they follow through is an entirely separate issue. Charlie Munger and Michael Burry concur. It would be great if the Fed could return inflation to a range of 2% to 3%, but if they must continue to increase interest rates, that would be a problem. Will there be the political willpower to keep going and properly get inflation under control, or will there be too much political pressure to keep the people happy and loosen monetary policy? They cause a severe recession which results in many Americans losing their jobs and being unable to afford their mortgages. According to Burry, the US will undoubtedly enter a recession by any definition in the second half of 2023, with the CPI possibly falling to negative levels. If the Fed reduces interest rates, the government will stimulate, often known as printing money, which will lead to a significant increase in inflation. That, as it turns out, is Michael Murray's most recent forecast. And to be honest, it fits well in with his past tweets. That much is evident. At the end of June, after a 20% drop in the stock market, Barry remarked that in his opinion, we haven't even reached a halfway point yet. On September 7th, he provided an update in which he stated that no, we have not yet hit bottom and he has stated in the past that he anticipates the S&P 500 will dip below the 2020 historical lows. Therefore, there is no question that he has a very pessimistic outlook for the subsequent few years, and the primary reason for this pessimism is that he does not have faith in the Federal Reserve. But with that being said, 
Please tell us what you think about and feel in the comment section down below. Do you think the Fed has the guts to end inflation once and for all in 2023? Will Michael Burry's prediction come true, taking us back to the 1970s? How hard will inflation be to control? Tell us what you're thinking in the comments down below.